Y'all, we are still at our favorite place in the world, one of the gorgeous feeders to the Little Missouri River in the Washita Mountain Range. But with it being such a beautiful day, we're gonna go on a hike down to the winding staircase because it's been a few years since we've done that, and we've never once again done it this time of year. But we're just ready to see what it looks like. It might be cool, it might be cold. That water's cold right now. Yeah, there's a few water crossings we'll have to do once we get to the trail. So that'll be interesting. We've got to pack our chacos. Normally I would just hike in our, in our chacos, which are our sandals, like they're hiking water sandals. Um, normally I would just hike in those, but it's so cold that my toes will probably be purple. So we're gonna wear hiking shoes, bring our chacos for the water crossings, and we'll just see how it goes. I'm already changed and ready to go. Cody's gotta get changed. I think I'll change there because I don't know. I've got to think about while we're driving what I want to wear. And I don't pack, know yet. Pack the backpack. Yeah, it's all in the truck, ready to go. Oh, all right. Yeah, all we gotta all do is jump. Are my chacos in there? No, but I'll get them. <laughs> all right, we're gonna finish locking everything up, and then we'll see you guys at the trailhead. We're at the trailhead. This trail that we're doing, we did it a long time ago in the summertime. We'll link that vlog below if you want to check it out. It's really beautiful here in the summer. Huge swimming holes. It's really cool. But like I said, we've never done this in the winter time. So this is, well, it's not really winter. It's, it's the first of spring. Feels like winter. It does. It's really cold um, today. So we're going to see. I'm sure it's going to look totally different because our camp spot looks totally different. But what we're hiking to is a feature called the winding staircase and it's a spot on the little missouri river where it looks like steps going down and the river bends around that and just does a 90 degree corner with well, a trail we're on is actually a much larger trail i think it's 23 or 27 miles i don't know exactly because i've never hiked the whole thing but it's great for backpackers if you saw all the vehicles at the parking lot that is all people that come to just just to backpack this trail it's called eagle rock loop so it's a whole entire loop and then there's some other trails just west of here that go into a wilderness called Caney Creek Wilderness. And this that we're about to cross is Baylock Creek, which is flows in to Little Missouri River. I'm hoping I don't have to turn the track over. Huh? Yeah, I told Kelly if I have to. Oh, look at these flowers. Look at these things. Are those not gorgeous? All right. But I was telling Kelly if I had to, I'll carry her on my back across the water. Because my toes are already like frozen in these shoes and thick socks. I don't know what's wrong with my toes, y'all. Wait, which way? Uh, we gotta cross the river up here.
Okay, so this is the Little Missouri River, which I just got Kelly across. My pants came on done and got sopping wet. But that's why I'm wearing Chacos. We're almost to the winding staircase. I wanted to show y'all this first rock feature and how pretty this is. If you're new to the channel, the Washita's are a mountain range in western Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma. They're one of the only mountain ridges that go east to west, that its valleys run east to west. And there is one more. It is uh, the Uintas in northeast Utah. That whole ridge runs east to west, but the valleys run still north to south on that one because it's so big. So when the South American plate collided with the North American plate, it pushed up all the layers and these mountains used to be 15, 14, 15,000 foot tall, just like the Rockies, much, much older than the Rockies. But here is a great rock outcrop to show how the layers of rock got pushed up. See that? Up at an angle right there? Right there. And those are vertical. Now the vertical is pretty cool. You don't see many vertical stacks of rock outcrop here that's where it just got pushed straight up see all this is vertical too but right in between the vertical chunk there and the vertical chunk here is a little bit of folded you can see where it's folded and you go straight back down it's pretty neat but kelly's over here waiting because i wanted to show y'all that i geek out over those little things so that was the last water crossing which we're not done yet we still have to do i'm gonna try to step on these rocks though oh you got this i'll help you okay all right angel princess you ready all right Kelly did her own water crossing. And there it is, y'all. Winding staircase. This rock outcrop here, this is the winding staircase. And that rapid over there looks so cool. We, we just walked past that, didn't we? Yeah. We need How to go look at awesome that. is this? How awesome. I come here, like I don't come here all the time, but I've been here a lot. And it still takes my breath away every single time. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So this whole area, all this beautiful stuff you see, including where we're camping, is the most compressed part of the Washita's. It has the most springs. It's just, it's a very unique region. And it almost became a national park in 1922. It was gonna be named Washita National Park. It went through Congress, Senate, but then when it got to President Coolidge's desk, he vetoed it because the national park system at the time was mainly focusing on Yellowstone, Sequoia, uh, Yosemite, and they said that this was not the most beautiful and large project and they didn't want to take their resources away from those other areas and put it here because back then they were a lot smaller of an operation than they are now but when they came here it was raining and misty the whole time so they didn't get to see any of this and they based their whole opinion on the fact that it was rainy and misty This is my favorite place on earth.
too cool, huh? We love this area and I'm really itching to come back when it's warmer so I can get in the water. We're gonna head back to camp, see you there. We're back at camp and while we were driving back, I saw a truck and I said, man, that truck looks real familiar. Well, we didn't see the person with the truck and I kept guessing, I was like, I told Kelly, I said, man, I think it's Jonathan's truck because Jonathan's supposed to be in Texarkana at his parents and driving back to Russellville to work tomorrow. And guess what? He snuck off the main highway and that is Jonathan's truck. And guess who just pulled up? It's me. But he don't he don't get to stay tonight. He was telling us he saw where they were stalking the rainbow trout. Show us, bro. So I caught two of them within five minutes apart from each other. I didn't know where to put them, so I just shoved them in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful fish. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see them yet, babe? Oh no, look at this fish. I got two that size. I can catch probably five more. Holy cow. You want me to go fishing, babe? <laughs> well, tomorrow morning. I'll go fishing tomorrow morning. Yeah. Dang. There, dude, there's there's like a couple of trucks from Texas and they're all out there fishing too. What were they biting? I was using the brown, uh, brown and green and black woolly booger. Goodness gracious, brother. I'm going to go fishing early tomorrow morning before you get up, babe. Okay, I'm gonna go fishing. That's fine with that. It's gonna be like 30 degrees. It is gonna be 30 degrees. I don't care. It's gonna be cold. <laughs> I'll show you where to go on a map. Yeah. Goodness gracious, man. Are you cooking those up tonight? Yeah. What are you gonna do with them? I don't know. Put them in a skillet. <laughs> I got plenty of seasoning. I need you to teach me how to fillet them and everything. Okay, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Okay. Well, I guess we're gonna have to go ahead and let y'all say bye to Jonathan because he's about to head out, I guess. Oh, no, I'm staying till like 8 o'clock. Oh, okay, never mind. Then we'll hang out with Jonathan. So you're cooking here. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, what? Okay. I got that. I didn't get that. Okay. Man, your mom's going to be so upset. I already told her. Oh, okay. All right, brother. I'll show you how to do it. Okay. You can finish up working out and all that. And... Okay. All right. Well, we're going to finish up working out like Jonathan just said. And uh, we'll see y'all at dinner. We are clean and mean. No, we're not mean. We're always really nice and sweet. Right, Angel Princess? Yeah. <laughs> and Jonathan came on a good night because Kelly is... <laughs> <laughs> Can we rinse it off? Yeah, I'll go rinse it off. Anyways, Kelly is cooking a dish. And Jonathan came on a night that it's going to be a good one. Not to mention the fact that he has trout to go along with it. I don't know how the trout will pair with what she's making that looks clean but angel princess what are you making for dinner tonight tonight i'm gonna make chicken marsala uh, and also some mashed potatoes to go with it so that's what i'm doing right now is i'm gonna boil the potatoes y'all know how happy i am that jonathan showed up and surprised us it just puts the biggest smile on my face because I was just rolling by and I saw his Ford. I was like, man, that's Jonathan's truck. Kelly was even saying, no, I don't think it's Jonathan's truck. I mean, I kind of thought it was, but I was like, I don't know. I was like, he's supposed to be in Texarkana. First things first with this chicken, we're gonna put some garlic powder and salt and pepper. And then flour. We're going to sear the chicken first. So this is for the marsala. I am slicing up some mushrooms. Once the chicken is done, then I can start with the sauce and then I'll go ahead and start boiling the potatoes. Now that the chickens are done, we're going to set those over here. We're going to saute the mushrooms. Those are sauteing. We're gonna get this garlic ready because that's gonna go in next. Now we're gonna add in some garlic. So are you just sauteing these until they're completely done? Yeah, or? they're pretty much soft right okay. now. Uh, now I'm just gonna let the garlic kind of go. Smells like it's ready. Now we're gonna add in some Marsala wine. Some 
Heavy cream. So I'll let it simmer for a few minutes. And then we're gonna put the chicken in here. Hopefully I have room for all the chicken. I didn't know there was gonna be that much chicken in there. Gosh, it smells so good. It looks good too. All right, now we're just gonna let it simmer until it gets a little thicker. And we'll flip the chickens as well. Y'all, along with Jonathan, are watching how to clean a fish. And y'all, it's kind of sad. It's not even my fish that I'm, that I'm cleaning. Ugh. I've never cleaned fish before. I've caught a lot of fish, but I, I never knew how to clean them. So this is a learning experience for me. So you're gonna come behind the spin here and you're gonna cut like this behind the fin. And you're gonna do a V shape. Cause then on the back side, you're gonna flip it over and come behind this fin right there, right behind the gills. See that little bump right there? Yeah. That is where uh, it uses the bathroom. You'll clean it off. Now, we'll take this and you can use a spoon or something. Usually on brim with larger scales, you can use a spoon. But this, see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. I'm removing all the little scales off of it. I'm just going backwards off the fish. Because these scales will get in your, uh, in your pan. And fish scales are what really make your dish taste fishy. My dad and I, when I was a kid, would always come up here and uh, fly fish. Here in spring break, there is a campground called the Old Button Factory site. And we used to go there. We'd stay a whole weekend, catch fish, cook them up, deep fry them, new potatoes. It's time of my life right there, I tell you what. And that's where we found Ron Duke. Yeah. And that's where I took Jonathan fishing for the first time when you were, what, six, seven? I think so, six or seven. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that day I caught a, I only caught one little brim. It was barely big enough to put into a, a pan and fry it. I remember that day. It was like one of the best days of my life right there when I was young. That was a good day right there. We're gonna sit here and we're gonna teach Jonathan how to do this. Make sure you bend back that, that fin. Bend back the fin. And, and do it at an angle. Like that? And move that finger. Yeah. Do it, put your finger on the top side. Okay. Okay. Like that. And then you need to get closer to the gills get, right there. Get closer, hold on. I'm gonna put down the camera and I'm gonna help Jonathan do this, but He's gonna know how to do this when it's all said and done. Trust me, trust me. <laughs> I wanna know how. He did it, y'all. He cleaned his first fish. Look at that. He is gonna remember this moment for the rest of his life. We're sitting here on this beautiful creek, Long Creek, with that beautiful view. Beautiful natural sounds of the water. You got it from here? I'm gonna go check on Kelly. Yeah, I got it. All right. Let's go up here and see what Kelly is doing. Angel Princess, did you start a fire? I did. Jonathan's here. <laughs> I haven't uh, missed out on the potatoes. What have you done? Oh, everything's done. Everything's done. Let's take a look at it. Potatoes look solid. So she put the chicken back in there with the mushrooms and the sauce, and that's going to go over the potatoes. How good is that? Okay. So lay that one in there. Uh, okay. Lay that knife on the board. There you go. And you can set the board down on top of uh, something down there. It's fine because we're done with it. Alright, so keep your hands dirty. So I didn't realize you were leaving this skin on. So. You know, all Kelly ever needed was a Jonathan to catch fish because apparently I'm never going to do it. Maybe tomorrow you will. Tomorrow I will. Oh, we're going to catch so many fish tomorrow. So now so, you're spinning that. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so Jonathan and I are going to wake up at 4 a.m., drive down there and fish for 30 fish? minutes. If I wake up at 4, it leaves me 30 minutes to 45 minutes to fish as long as I leave here by 5. Y'all crazy because I'm sleeping. It's gonna be cold. It's gonna be a long day, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> you know cold. how cold it's gonna be tomorrow? Oh, it's gonna be miserable. It's supposed to get, so Langley is the nearest town you can check the weather of Albert Pike, but it's like it's 700, cheap. 800 feet below this. And it says it's supposed to be a low 30, 
Low 35. 35, which means it's a 10 degree difference. Never fails from there to here. So it's gonna be 25 here tonight. Wow. I just said that out loud, honey. Well, I'm gonna be sleeping. Yeah, you'll be sleeping. Well, I mean, they're looking solid. I mean, how do you know yeah, they look so. good. Uh, right here, you can tell at the front, it's white and flaky already. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, especially since you already flipped it. There's a piece that came out. So, okay. uh, well, I need to know. I need to throw the garlic in. Okay, point. you go ahead and throw in the garlic. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it needs extra salt. This is the center. It's a fish. It's really hot. Are you going to mess up the table? No, nah, I'm putting the uh, thing up under it. Oh. Take a bite of that with the skin. Mm. Is that look good? That seasoning's good. Try that bite right there, babe. Oh, hold there's on, bones there's some bones in it. in it. That seasoning's very good. Mm. Is that not solid, Jonathan? No. Sorry, honey. I'm, I'll just eat this. Do you think I hurt you eating the bones? No. They're so small. Don't got a mouthful of bones. <laughs> <laughs> So dinner was delish. The fish was good. Chicken marsala turned out really well. But you're not gonna see me up early in the morning. I'm gonna be getting my beauty rest. You'll just have to see what happens. See you then. Good morning. Y'all probably didn't think we'd be able to do it, did you? I didn't think we'd be able to do it. It's officially four and Jonathan has already taken his stuff down. I wanna help Jonathan finish taking down his tent. We'll see y'all at the fishing hole. We just made it to where we're gonna be putting in at. It's 28 degrees, I can't feel my hands, but we're about to go fishing. Let's do it. It's so cold that the water is freezing on the line and the guides. Look at that, y'all. That's this is, crazy. Yeah. Look, all that's frozen too. Well, after his line froze to his uh, eyelids on his pole, Jonathan's gonna have to go to work now. Yep. It's 5 a.m. You be. gotta be at work in a few hours. Hey, thank you for the surprise. Isn't that cool yeah. that he surprised us? I completely did not expect it, and then I geeked out. <laughs> All right, bro. I didn't expect coming up here. Well, I love you, man. I'll catch you on the other. Love you, too. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Jonathan, this one's for you, bro.
I finally caught some fish. I mean, like, I really caught some fish. I was fly fishing, and I was having issues with the end of my pole freezing, and it started to get to the point where the line wouldn't go out. So I switched to the open cast. I would have preferred to be able to fly fish. I'm itching to do some more fishing now. About to head back and check on Kelly. She should just be getting up because it is 7.59. I'm counting that minute, because I told her I'd be at back around eight o'clock, so let me hurry up, get back there, and see what she's up to. Hey, Angel Princess, I'm back. I caught five fish. You ready for dinner? Or breakfast? Sure. Okay, I'm just playing. So this couple of days have been full of surprises. There is somebody else here that surprised us. Can you guess who it is? Can you guess? Here they are. Hi. <laughs> we showed up. It's my pops. Mwah. And Kayla, this is the most important person. And Kayla's here. <laughs> Kayla, Kayla. Oh, baby girl. Oh, there's food involved. No. Yeah, there's food involved. Yeah. Get a wafer. Okay. Makes everything better. So we're going to enjoy relaxing for the rest of the day with them in this beautiful area in Keela. <laughs> hey Keela. Keela is so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> We have enjoyed our relaxing time with Dad and Mava, but now we're trading out Dad and Mava yeah. for some other friends. And it's another surprise, right, Angel Princess? We knew they were coming. We planned on this. They're actually camping with us. And it's Ted and Ann. I don't know if you remember them. They've been in our vlog several times. Ted and Yay. Ann are some of our fish friends. <laughs> and we love you guys. How easily love you be replaced. <laughs> All right. How easily you get out. Just get Bye. out. Ro rotating here. Come back when you can't stay so long. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we'll see Dad and Malva tomorrow. They're going to be coming back tomorrow. Love you. Bye. And they'll be bringing some friends. But y'all have to wait till the Tuesday vlog to see that. But tonight, Kelly's going to be cooking uh, beef bourguignon.
really like, yummy. That's all there. Kelly's Beef Bourguignon. Did I say that right, y'all? Yeah, that's Sounds right. right. Yeah. This sounds fancy. Yeah. Was phenomenal. Top notch. Uptown high rent for sure. Absolutely. It really was. Totally good. But Ted worked really hard to cook this key lime pie from scratch. Is that what you told me? It was uh, medium hard. Medium hard. Yeah. What's that mean? That means not, not uh, hard. Not. It took me a few minutes. Maybe 20. From scratch was the question. But from that... scratch. But absolutely. that's good. I mean, it's from scratch. Took you 20 minutes. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'd buy that for a dollar. It's like farm to table situation. There you go. So you yeah. bought it in a store. No, no, I didn't. I made it. Just the crust. What's that? That's some spooch. <laughs> That's some drippings. Honey, will you take care of me? Is that for later tonight? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hide that in the... Man, it's nasty. Like <laughs> From later? For yeah. later? Uh, this I'm is like dirty. Kid. I am like a kid. I'm so... Oh. That shirt's sure been dirty. That shirt has been dirty. So he's going to present this for us. No pressure. No pressure. The first piece is always the worst. All right, we're going to go like that. And then set her down. And then we're going to do a little bit of this, okay. you know, from the can. And then we're going to go a little. Oh, he has a full oh, bag. Yeah. Okay. And this is presentation. Take, take our lime. How cute. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. give it a little twist and set it right there. That is so cute. And Kelly, that's all yours. I love it. So cute. Ready to try, Enjoy. try it real quick? I guess so. Taste. Mm. So tell me this, what do you do with the lime? Is it just decor, or do you use, do you score? That's a garnish. Yeah, is you don't need any extra lime. That's delicious. You don't need to no, eat the lime anybody. unless you really want it. But now, is it bad etiquette to eat the lime? Yeah, I mean, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's bad etiquette, etiquette, but it's just a garnish mm. to make it look nice, look okay. pretty. That's so good, but I'm gonna wait yeah. on everybody else. Okay, okay. Well, I better serve it up then. I oh, just I really want to clarify. Ted really did make this pie. This isn't a joke. He didn't really go to the store, pick it up and bring it. He literally made this pie. Ted, I was really thinking you were just joking earlier and you just picked this pie up. I did make the pie. So Ted wants to be in control of his own destiny. I've never had homemade key lime pie. What? I don't think I have either. I don't think I've had key lime pie in a long time. It's delish. Let's try this thing. And look at this love chair. If y'all don't know, we've talked about this love chair in prior vlogs that they've been in. And they just, all, like, where did y'all find this chair at? Um, I just needed a two-seater. And I said, can I find that? And there it was on Amazon or something. How's it taste, babe? I haven't even Delish. tried it yet. I need to try it. Have you tried it, Ann? Have you ever had key lime pie by Ted? I've had Ted's key lime. It's delicious. Mm. Yes. Mm -mm. Are you waiting to see what everybody says first? Tony likes it. Freaking good. Mikey likes it. You guys are Man, it is Mikey real lime. It. Like, it's like lime. Yeah. It's key lime. Mm. What's the key? From the keys of Florida, I guess. Key lime. I might mm. be lying completely. Um, you know what? I believe you. It comes in a bottle. It's juice in a bottle. But and you, you just you make it. You can buy bottle. the key limes and squeeze them. You're pretty you could, good. But I didn't. Well, that's delicious. Well, that's really good. he blew us away with this. And tomorrow morning, which will be next Tuesday for you, Kelly and Ted are having a cook-off. And Anne. Well, oh, she's he, helping. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> well, that's, that's, she's going to be Ted's sous chef. I'm going to be the my, camera guy of all she's this. She's my sous chef for sure. And then Kelly is going all on her own because Kelly doesn't need help. Kelly does. If you get in Kelly's way in the kitchen, she's going to draw back a nub and you get sad. Get out of here. Her. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, once again, Tuesday for y'all, it's going down a breakfast cook-off. So we will catch y'all on the other. Bye. Night. Peace.